finish traffic. Oh, wait, that's right. Oh, my autopilot just failed. Unbelievable, dude. Cool, so there's your 700. So we'll say you broke out of the clouds. You can go visual. Visual. We're still going to work our way down toward 500. Yep. All right, let's go get some fuelage. All right, guys, so uh, welcome back to another episode today. Pearson and I are going up, and we're going to be shooting some instrument approaches. So basically simulating as if you were in the clouds or visibility or weather was bad so that you couldn't directly see the runway or were flying yeah, under what's called visual eight, flight eight, rules. Eight, so we are going to go up, and I'm going to put the hood on to simulate that I can only see the dash and the instruments, and we're going to go through a couple of procedures of landing within those parameters. So I'll kind of talk more about that as the video goes on, but it's a pretty interesting subject and it will save your life one day. It's called your instrument. So that's what I'm working on. All right, so just like how you fill up your car at a gas station, you can also fill up an airplane at a gas pump as well, but our gas pump is out of order. So we've got the fuel truck here. He's connecting ground wire to the front gear and then we put fuel in each of the wings, the right and the left on this plane. So we are gonna top this thing off before we head up for an hour or two and practice our instrument approaches because weight and fuel things uh, plays a big part in flying and aviation in general when they get into like the weight and balance of an aircraft. And you're also timing out your flight too because obviously you don't want to run out of fuel. So we're just gonna fill it up. It's just Pearson and I today. So we really don't have to worry about weight and balance too much. We know the plane's gonna be within that chart that each airplane actually comes with in its, in its what's called its pilot operating handbook. And so we're gonna top her off and then get to flying. We are gonna be landing it blindfolded. No, just kidding, no, we're not actually landing it blindfolded, but we're simulating bad weather or flying instrument weather is what they call it. So I'm gonna have a hood on and Pearson and I are gonna be working through some procedures. There's different types of equipment that's used in these type of situations, including GPS as well as equipment on the ground to help you land an airplane if you ever need to fly through the clouds so that you can do it safely and you know get to your destination in a safe manner. So. It's going to be a, you know, I've got my private license, Pearson's my instructor, like I said, and uh, I'm working towards my instrument ticket so that I can legally fly in the clouds. So we're taking off from Venice today. We're going to be heading over to Punta Gorda. It's a little bit less busier of an airport than Sarasota so that we can shoot different type of approaches into the same airport. We're going to be simulating like we're going through the clouds and I'm going to reach a particular altitude and Pearson is going to either tell me I have the runway in sight or I, that I do not. And so, you know, when you get a foggy day and the clouds are super low, there's different minimums at each airport that are, you know, written in, in the uh, charts. And if you reach that altitude and you cannot see the runway, you technically are not allowed to land there. And that's so that you don't hit any obstructions or other aircraft that are on the ground. There's a whole list of reasons why these minimums exist. But it's also to keep you safe as well. You know, if you reach that altitude or if you're above that altitude and you do see the runway, then you can land the plane safely. You're allowed to do so. And there's a lot of laws and regulations that revolve around this whole situation of instrument flying, but I'm gonna kind of give you guys the gist of it and show you what the training is like for instrument license. And rotate. She's heavy with all that fuel on her. Oh yeah, but it's cold. She'll get climbing. Not like the middle of summer, we can actually get a 600 foot climb out of this thing. <laughs> Alright, 32769, radar contact, turn right to a 050 and join the Victor 579 to Viola. Alright, traffic Piper 69 is turning right crosswind for 31, departing the pattern to the southeast Venice. Are we in the clouds yet? Oh my goodness, just went in the clouds. Air controls. Air controls. Air controls. Finish traffic. Blue and white to cap on 5 Alpha Charlie, departing runway 31. We'll be making a left downwind departure southbound along the shore at Venice. Finish traffic. Oh, wait, that's right. Oh, my autopilot just failed. Unbelievable.
unbelievable, dude. Uh, who would have thought? Who would have thought? So this is one of those things, these instructors do, man. You'll just be just cruising, and they'll start killing your instruments like if it's real life. Fort Myers approach, this is Piper 32769 or with the uh, Viola, 2,000 feet. Would like to take the ILS at 4 at Punta Gorda. And if there was someone calling for practice approaches at Punta Gorda, enable at this time, call me back in 20 minutes if you still want to. Do you want to go back to Madison? Yeah, we'll make a right turn to 240. Alright guys, so basically we just called uh, Fort Myers Approach to ask them if we could do practice approaches to Punta Gorda, and basically they just told us no. So, exactly. <laughs> We're going to start out with the RNAV 3-1. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and program that whenever you want to. Pearson's going to tell me when we get to a certain altitude, he's going to say, he's either going to say runway in sight or he's going to say nothing. If he says nothing and I reach my minimum altitude, then I have to initiate a go around. If he says runway in sight, then I'm allowed to land. And that's simulating you popping out underneath the clouds of a low ceiling, whether you're above minimums or not. Benefit traffic for you know, right, and there's 300, runway is not in sight, one, so I'm going best. Venice traffic, Piper, 32769 is going miss, 31 Venice. Alright guys, so we just simulated what would happen if you were approaching through the clouds. Let's say you're flying along, you're on top of the clouds, you're going through, or you've been in the clouds. You're approaching the runway, you're using your instruments, and the runway does not appear, and you've reached your minimum altitude. You would have to then execute a go-around or a mist. So you'd cram the throttles, you'd clean up the airplane, you'd remove any flaps, and then there's a holding pattern that's published as well. You would then extend to that point, and at that point you could determine whether you were to go to an alternative airport, or if you are going to make a different kind of approach into a different runway at the same airport. So there is uh, a lot that goes into this, and it's a lot of hood time, but got to get it done. What's your favorite part about instrument approaches? Nothing? Oh, the instrument approaches? What's your favorite type, Arnav? Anything when you're on an approach and stuff starts breaking. That's in a favorite. simulated situation. Yeah, 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 in a simulated situation. Yeah, it's fun when you're on an approach and it becomes more challenging after you get the hang of them. Yeah. So you're on an approach, you got the autopilot running, all of a sudden the autopilot kicks off, and then you thought you are going to have an LPV, and now you're on an LNAV, and then you throw in the fact of a circle, which is what we're about to have happen. One thing I talked about on Cooper's podcast, which is coming out within the next week or two, is Mike Patey had a really interesting video in regards to the three check rule. And so any, since he's a recreational flyer for the most part, he has a rule with his brother that if there's any three obstacles that are going to prevent them from flying, it could be a piece of equipment that they haven't fixed, it could be you know, they would have to stop somewhere to get yeah, fuel. If it's at night, that's a check mark. And if they have a cumulative amount of three checks, they will not fly. And so that's something that I've applied to myself because there's so many disasters in aviation because of careless mistakes or, you know, just people not, not, not following the rules like they should. And so if I want to live a long, prosperous life and enjoy aviation to its max, I'm going to implement the three-strike rule. Okay, we're going, uh, we're going to do RNAV, we're going to do a GPS approach, so RNAV to 5, circle, you said 3-1? Circle 3-1. And we're going to say your clouds are on this approach, you're at 700 feet. Once you're through that, you can go visual. Okay. Make your circle to 3-1. Alright. That is not on that, that'll be in your chirps. Got it. You have to stay within 1.3 miles. Cool, so there's your 700, so we'll say you broke out of the clouds, you can go visual. Visual. We're still going to work our way down toward 500. Yep. Now, you don't have to keep this super tight, because you have 1.3 from the end of runway 31 also. Yeah. I'm going to keep it tight. That's how I like it. Yep, but on your base, you're going to want to start descending. Yep. Very usual. want to end up close to two white, two red when you get on that final there. Will he butter the landing? We're going to find out. We are going to find out.
Advanced traffic Cessna 461 Tango Charlie, six miles to the northeast. Not bad, not bad. I uh, will cross midfield at 1,500 and enter um, here drop full stop. for 31. It is up to you. We can do another approach or we can do full stop. I would say it's a full stop type day. Your boy's cooked. All right, guys, that wraps it up for day 17 of Teeth and Turbos. If you have an already, make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment. So close to the 100K sub mark. We'll see you tomorrow. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.